What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. We do an up down from Hack the Box, which is a website monitoring service. So you input the URLs you want to monitor and it sends you a notification or a webhook when the actual URL is down. Now there is a LFI vulnerability that you can get code execution for, but the difficulty here is the include statement appends.php and the file upload portion of the website doesn't allow you to upload PHP files. Now you can exploit this without uploading a single file to the server, which we'll cover at the end of the video, but the intended way is to take the file upload and upload a FAR archive, which is like a zip that contains PHP files, and you don't have to give it an extension so you can upload this archive and in the LFI, you can use the far PHP wrapper to point it at the archive and you can actually tell it to go into the archive and specify a file allowing you to upload PHP files to the web server. Um, the route is relatively simple, so let's just hop into the box. As always, we're gonna start with an nmap. So dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it up down, then the IP address of 1010.11.177. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have SSH on port 22. Its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu box. Then we have HTTP on port 80. Its banner tells us it's also Ubuntu running Apache. And the title of this page is, Is My Website Up? So let's just go take a look at the page. So 1010.11.177. And we just get, hello, is my website up? And you can enter a website to check. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my IP address of 1010.14.8, and then we can set up a netcat listener on port 80, run this check, and see what we get. Um, the main thing I was looking for is user agent to see if it leaks what library it's using to um, do a request. We just see site is up.htb, so um, nothing really important there. I'm going to do it again just because there is a debug mode. So let's set this up and we get the same exact thing. So debug doesn't really add anything in the server headers. I'm gonna run a GoBuster on this. So we have some type of recon going in the background. So GoBuster uh, dir for directory mode, dash w for word list, op, sec list, discovery, web content, raft, small words, dot text. Uh, the extension, let's see what type of website this is. If we do uh, index.php, which is always my first guess, it is a PHP website. If we tried other extensions like HTML, we get a not found. So I'm gonna do dash X PHP dash O. I'm gonna just do gobuster.root because we're just gobustering the root directory here. Then finally, we need a URL. So HTTP 10.10.11.177. And then we'll let that go as we play with this some more. We could stand up a web server and just see the output, but I can also try redirecting it to 127.001. And it says the website is up. It's a bit hard to read, but we can see that there. So let's try 127.001 with debug mode on. And after we turn on debug mode, we get the output of the page. So right when I see this, I'm thinking maybe some type of service side request forgery because we could probably insert any port we want. So if I try port 22, uh, it tells us the website is down, so I guess it has to be HTTP. But if there's another web server on this box that's only accessible to localhost, we'll be able to find out. So I'm gonna just do a sudo nmap dash p dash 10, 10, 11 dot, um, what is it, 177. And we can add a dash v, so it shows up open ports as we find it. And we can do nmap, um, we'll do up, down, all ports. Okay. We could also run like fuff and create a fuzz for the port. And that may be the better thing to do, but it takes a little bit longer to set up. So I'm just running the end map first to see if it shows any filtered ports. So we also have site is up.htb here, which was the user agent. So I'm going to add this into my host file. So sudo v etsy host. And we can add 10.10.11.177, 10, site is up.htb, and take a look at this page to see if it's the same exact thing. It looks like it is. So there's nothing interesting there. Let's go take a look at the GoBuster to see if there's anything of note. And we have this slash dev directory. So if we go into slash dev, it's just a blank page. So there is no index um, here. 
And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to kill that go buster. I'm going to do another go buster on this dev directory. So we can call this go buster dot dev. Um, I can get rid of the PHP. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. And the URL is going to be slash dev. So we're just running the same exact go buster on the slash dev directory to see if it tells us there's any interesting files here. Um, we can go look at the end map. Hasn't found any ports yet, and it's almost done. So I don't think there's going to be any type of server-side request forgery here. We could, um, while we wait, try to do other things. Maybe we can get files, right? So generally, whenever I can input a URL, I also try inputting like this file handler. So I do file etsy pass wd, and we get hacking attempt direct, uh, detected. So if I do HTTP colon slash slash file, we get site seems to be down. If I do file, please subscribe. We get hacking attempt was detected. So it looks like um, any URL that begins with file uh, gets hacking de uh, attempt direct detected. I'm just gonna try like FTP uh, colon slash slash 10, 10, 14, eight. And I wanna say FTP's port, is it 20? sudo nc-lvnp20. See, site seems to be down and we don't get anything here. I'm gonna Google that real quick. Default FTP port, and it's 21. Maybe, I don't know it's 20. So let's try FTP, do this, and we do get a connection. So we could, have this do FTP connections. I don't know what that really buys us, but we've confirmed it's not just HTTP. So we could look into other types of wrappers here, um, maybe like Gopher, which is good for protocol smuggling. So 10, 10, 14, eight. I don't even know what the default Gopher port is. Uh, default Gopher port, 70. So let's just do Gopher like this. And I don't even know if this is how you, um, do the go for URI, it looks like it is. It connects back to us. And we're not getting that um, header. So um, we know it's probably communicating through the go for protocol. This is kind of interesting because this doing the go for connection means we could um, put things on the socket and do protocol smuggling and send like a um, request to a different, um, protocol. I'm sure if I go to ipsec.rocks and type gopher, we talk about it right there in the Jarmus video. Uh, probably travel as well. So if you want to know more about that technique, I'd go there. But this is just me finding potential vulnerabilities for this. And we have .get directory discovered. So if I go into slash, uh, was it dev.get, we have an open directory. And generally, whenever I get this, I try to use a tool called Git Dumper. And if you just Google it, you can get to the GitHub repository of it. But what this is going to do, we'll just make this directory website. Uh, we can run Git Dumper H, is download the whole Git directory and then um, pull out the master file, right? So we do Git Dumper, the URL HTTP, site is up.htb dev.git. And did I add that to my host file? I did. Okay, and then the directory we want, which we called website. So now it's going to download the .git and then run checkout on master. So it downloads the source code. And if I go into this website directory, we have the source code for the website. So I'm gonna run code, which is just gonna open up VS code on this directory. I believe it opened on this directory. I don't think it did. So let's do file, uh, not open workspace item, uh, open folder, HTB, this is up, down, and then we call it website. And I think it auto-completed the .git, which is annoying. So let's open folder. Uh, yeah, we trust the author. Website, open this. There we go. So now we have all the source code. So we see admin.php, all that does is 
Um, print access denied. There's a to do. So there's nothing here. Um, we could do a get log to see all the commits to see if there's changes to this admin. Um, we have checker.php and index.php. And we have page is equal to admin, define, direct access. Um, I don't really like how this is being displayed, how we have like not enough line breaks here. So I'm going to pause the video, see if I can figure out how to get this displayed a bit better. Okay, I figured it out. So what we do is go to file, preferences, settings, and then we can change the font size here. I have it set to 24. But if I edit the settings.json, we can do this line height thing, and we can change the line height to something like 35, which I think makes it a bit cleaner. So now if I go back to index.php, we see it like this. So um, right off the bat, the PHP code, we define direct access to false, and then we get the page. And if the page doesn't, um, I guess, have slash bin user home var Etsy, then it does an include on the page variable and dot PHP. So it appends this dot PHP. Um, else it includes checker.php, and this is the website we actually see here. So there's nothing too interesting here. We do have a um, LFI vulnerability here. So we could um, question mark, let's see. Let's go here. Go to Burp Suite. Oh, we got to open up Burp Suite. And we can see if we can just um, play with this LFI to confirm this is the actual source code we're looking at. So open up burp, proxy intercept is on, go to this page, send it, and we can say question mark page is equal to PHP colon filter, then was it convert dot base 64 encode, I think resource is equal to index, and it's going to append the .php for me. And this did not work. Let's see. So it didn't match any of this. Not exactly sure why this page thing did not work here. But let's move on and look at these commits to see if there's anything interesting. Um, going down, we have a commit here, delete ht pass wd. So I'm gonna check out this commit real quick. And I'm gonna be lazy and just copy website to, we'll call it git. And then we'll do git check out this. And the reason why I um, did this is so I can just remove this Git directory, go back to the website, and be straight at master. I know you could like um, do another Git command to find that out, but I'm not a Git wizard, so this is generally how I do it, right? So we do cat.htpasswd, and we see this file is empty. We could look at change log to see this. We look at cat ht access. We do see something weird. Um, set environment, if no case, special dev, only for dev, required header. So it's setting this header. Um, it sets special dev and only for dev. So what I'm gonna do is go back here. We're gonna get on slash dev. We see it's moved permanently to nothing here. So I'm gonna add this header, special dev, I'm going to put only for dev to see if this does anything. And we just get in 200 OK. And this may seem like a super CTF step, but I've actually seen something similar to this in a lot of applications because of vulnerability testing, believe it or not. Because a lot of websites will have some type of web application firewall in place. And when they have that in place, you can't really run any type of web application scanners like um, Acunetics or NetSpark or Burp Suite Scanner because the web application firewall just blocks it. 
So a lot of the vendors tell you to add something in Apache config to bypass the web application firewall in this new form of a header. And that's what this step reminds me of. But now uh, we don't really see anything here. So I'm gonna go back to get log to see if there's anything of interest. Um, new technique and header to protect a dev v host. So it looks like there is a virtual host header, right? Um, what I'm gonna do is just guess the virtual host. You could use wfuzz or gobuster to get this, but since it says dev virtual host, the first thing I would try is just going to dev dot, um, what was it, site is up dot htb. And we get a, a website here. If we put anything here, do we get a website? Probably, right? But if I take out this special header and we go back to dev, we get forbidden. So we add this header in and we get the actual website. So we know we need this header to access the website. And what I'm going to do is go into proxy, go to options, and then on this match and replace tab, I'm gonna add, and it says request header here. I'm gonna leave it that. Match, if we leave it blank, it adds a new header. So we're going to add the header special dash dev and only for dev. I'm gonna say bypass up down WAF for a web application firewall. So now anything that goes through Burp Suite is going to add this header for us. And we can validate that by turning Burp Suite off. Um, then go sudo vi etsy host and say dev.site is up.htb dev.site is up.htb. We see forbidden here. We can turn burp suite on. And we actually get a website. And the difference here is we have a file upload form it looks like. And we also have this little header in the top left that says it's only for developers with an admin link that goes nowhere. Um, in the original version of the site, we see that doesn't exist. Uh, the header also has beta version here. Um, if we look at the actual code, this does reflect it because we can see this is only for developers with the admin panel there. Look at the admin panel. It just has that link for to do. So we know we're on the um, version we had the source code for. Um, I'm going to retest this whole PHP filter thing. So we got to change the site or the host to dev site is up.htb, we get the forbidden because we don't have this header. So let's add this header, which allows us to bypass the web application firewall. And we just get base64. So let's copy this, echo dash n, and paste this in. And we have the source code that we already got from Git. So this just confirms that we have an LFI vulnerability. And we can actually get code execution just from this. Um, this is going to be an unintended route to do it without uploading a file. We'll cover that at the end of the video because the first way I want to do it is just the intended way because it's also cool. The trick here is we append.php. And for the unintended way, it doesn't matter what we append. But for the intended way, this makes it tough because if we go to the checker, which the checker is this page where we have the file upload form, and look at the code. So I'm just going to look, oh, we're right here, what get extension is, it's looking for PHP, HTML, uh, Pi. These are all the things we can't upload. If we look at the get extension, it's just going to get the very last thing after the last period. So we can't really just trick this out. Um, so we can only upload extensions that probably won't get code execution. Uh, so let's go up. Let's just do v test.php just to confirm it. So PHP, and we can do system, then get CMD, right? So this is just generally our PHP shell. So if we try to upload this, it's going to give us an error message saying like the extension is not allowed. If we move test.php to be test.txt, it's going to upload the file. Uh, site is down, and it echoes this. I didn't realize it echoed. Um, 
And if we look at the code for upload, so let's see, where's get extension used? It's gonna go in uploads and then an MD5 of time. So let's just go to slash uploads and we can see this MD5 sum. Oddly enough, the file is not there. Let's try uploading it again. And if we do it quicker, does the file exist? So dev uploads this one. Huh. Let's see, do we have to give it a URL? Sudo nc lvnp 80. So we're gonna hang it. So let's do v test.txt. Actually, I'm gonna put it on one line. Does one line change it? So check. Site seems to be down, that is fine. Go to slash uploads, new directory, still don't have it. So let's try 10, 10, 14, 8. So what we're gonna do here is when we upload this text thing, I'm going to assume the web application is gonna hang as it connects to my web server. And if it does, maybe it won't clean up. Uploads is completely empty now. We did get a connection. So let's try this again. Test.txt, check, refresh, directory, test.txt, and we have it. So we have the file now. What we're going to do is add K. And what K is gonna do is keep this port open so we can connect to it multiple times. We don't have to keep going back to this netcat. Um, we're going to make this a far wrapper, P-H-A-R, which is essentially just a zip in PHP. Um, it's very similar to the Crime Stoppers if you did my box from a long time ago. So let's go in test.txt. That looks fine. I'm going to zip. I'm going to call this test.far and add test.txt here. So inside of this test.far file, we have test.txt. And I just realized I made the mistake. Um, because we're doing this, we can name a file test.php. And test.far, it can be anything we want. Um, far may be a blacklist extension. So I'm going to make this JPEG, right? Because the magic byte is all that matters, that it's a zip. So if I upload test.jpg, let's do this. Do I still have netcat running? I do. So we can check this out. And then if I go to uploads, we have this. And we have test.jpg here, which is really a far. So what we want to do is include this. So if I go back to this PHP filter, we can look at it, it gives a 200 OK. So instead of the filter, we're going to do far. Uh, I think it's far colon slash slash actually. And then the path. And we can just do, what was the file name? Test. Yeah. And it's going to append the PHP for us. Um, we got a 500 internal server error, which is a bit odd. If I had an invalid file, we still have 200 OK. So what this is telling me is there's an error in our PHP code. So I'm going to simplify our payload. And in this test.php, I'm not going to do the system command. I'm just going to do echo, please subscribe. Okay, let's remove test.jpg and we'll zip it back up. So we'll do zip test.jpg, test.php. And then what we want to do is upload this again. So browse, test.jpg, upload it. Then when we go to slash uploads, we have this, which has test.jpg. So we just say copy this MD5 sum, paste it in, 
and we only get please subscribe. We don't get the echo, so we know we have code execution. So something funky is going on. So let's go back to test.php and I'm gonna run PHP info. So we're gonna do this. And then just to be clean, I'm going to remove it, zip it back up. And then I'm gonna upload it again. And again, the reason why this is working is because when we upload it, it's a JPEG extension. However, when we access it, um, we can tell PHP to go inside of the zip, which then allows us to pick any name we want, right? So when the code is checking it, it checks JPEG, it's not checking the files in the zip. And in this far wrapper, we're allowed to go inside of a zip to specify the file. So this test, it's really test.php in the code appends the .php for us. So now we have the PHP info page. What I'm going to do is just request it and we can look at it. So the main thing I wanna look at is disabled functions. So is it disable underscore functions? There it is. So this is what I wanna look at. I'm gonna put it in a text edit. And then let's do comma replace with return. There we go. Makes it a bit easier to read. We can see the system function was disabled. So this is why we got that 500 error because system functions were disabled, so we couldn't execute. We have a bunch of other things disabled. So what we really wanna do is figure out if there's any dangerous functions that are not disabled that we can use for code execution. Which sounds like a super easy task, but I don't really know a good program that does it. Um, the best one I found publicly was this um, defunct bypass script, I wanna say. Let's see, can we find it quickly on GitHub? Uh, defunct bypass, this is it. And the thing I don't like about this is it's Python 2. And I tried to make it Python 3, it wasn't so easy with the Python 2 to 3, but also when looking at the script, I was thinking like, why do this in Python as well? when it's PHP that we want. So all this does is really generate some PHP code that we can upload. And we got a list of a lot of the good dangerous functions right here. We can also add these other ones to a script, but I figured let's just create a PHP thing um, ourselves to test this out. So I'm gonna do file, new file, and I'm gonna call this um, dangerous.php, I guess. Did it upload, uh, create file. There we go. So I'm gonna do PHP and I'm gonna call it, um, we can say dangerous underscore functions is equal to, and we gotta specify array and we can put everything here. And I think I copied the wrong thing. So let's get this off, go back. Cause I definitely want all the, single quotes, right? There we go. So that looks better. Uh, we have to do the dollar sign there. So now we have an array of dangerous functions. Um, we could add things. So we can also add, let's see, MB string. And it's only checking these if something's enabled. Um, I'm not gonna be that specific. There's that. Then let's get this next one. Okay. And I'll probably commit this to my GitHub as well. Maybe we'll make some code edits eventually, but we have a list of the dangerous functions. So all we wanna do in PHP is identify if something is dangerous and Wow. Um, so I have GitHub Autopilot on, and I think it already knows what I want to do. I'm just gonna try running this. I'm gonna hit tab to auto complete it. And let's see, we can get rid of this, this. Is that gonna work? I don't think it's gonna work. I think this is a case of AI being wrong, but yeah, 
So, um, as with a lot of just auto-generated code, it looks great until you try to use it, and then you realize something screwed up. So, what if I go through um, loop through dangerous functions and print if it is enabled? So let's help it out. There we go. That looks better. So AI for the win. Um, I probably would have done it slightly different because there is a PHP thing called function exist. I would have used that instead of extension loaded, but we'll see if it works. I don't know if it does. Um, we can test it out real quick. So if I go in, I think website is what it is. Yeah, PHP dangerous, nothing echoed. So if I change this extension loaded uh, function exists as function, if I run this, there we go. So AI again, didn't get it 100%, but it is still impressive and does save time uh, as long as you still know what you want. So now we have this dangerous.php. I'm going to move it up one directory and we can zip this. So this test.jpg will do dangerous.php as well. And when I run this, it should tell us if there's any dangerous functions enabled. So let's go back to the upload, test.jpg, upload it, then go to uploads, get the new MD5 sum, go into a burp, put it, and then we also didn't call it test.php, we called it dangerous.php, and we can see there's only one thing enabled, and that is proc underscore open. So if we Google PHP proc open, uh, we can see how to do it. And actually, I'm gonna see if I can use GoPilot, uh, GitHub Copilot. So PHP execute code with proc open. CMD, create the pipe. Okay, so yep, this is it. I don't know if I need this last line. That's just printing out the process. I want to say this is all I need. So it saved me from Googling. So let's do um, bash dash C. It knows me so well. 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,001. There we go. Like magic. So this is the code we want. This should send us a reverse shell. We use proc open, give it the command, give it the descriptors, and I don't know where pipes gets declared. Dollar pipes. Let's see, let's test this out. I'm not confident this is gonna work. V, let's make der dub dub dub, v test.php. I'm just going to execute it against myself. And the reason why I'm doing this is if it errors out, um, it will tell me, right? I'll have standard out. So if I just do php test.php, uh, it connected, but I actually think it worked. Sweet. So let's move test.php to shell.php and try this out. So we can go back to the zip, add shell.php to a test.jpg, listen on 9001, go back to the page, test.jpg, upload, Go up one directory, get the new hash, paste it in. We no longer want dangerous. We want shell. Gave it 200 OK, and we have a shell in the box. So that is that. Um, we can do Python 3-C import PTY, PTY.spawn, then bash, st2i raw minus echo foreground. 
and we have a shell. So let's export term is equal to x term. There we go. So the first thing I generally would look for is some type of hard-coded credentials. We can look at the standard HTML page. Uh, nothing there. If we look at dev, it literally only has that .git thing and also an empty index.php. So there's nothing really for us there. If we look at slash home, we can access this developer directory. So if I go into developer and we look at this contents, there is user.txt, but we don't have read access. Only root and developer can read it, and we're dub 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 data. That being said, there is this dev directory, and we can read it as dub 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 data because the uh, permissions are read execute, and that is required to go into a directory and list the contents. So we can go into dev, and if we look at this, there's two files. Um, it looks like one is a elf binary, and it's also set UID. And then there's also a Python script. So if I just cat the site as a Python script, uh, there's two things I notice. Um, well, one main thing. After the print is a space. So this is Python 2, not Python 3. And it's also using input. And in Python 2, whenever input is used, you can get code execution there. Um, you're supposed to use, I think, raw input. It's been so long since I looked at it but I just know that's one of those things, right? So what I'm gonna do is execute site is up, which we've determined is set UID. We could also just look at it, RWS, probably set UID. If we run a stat against it, we can see the permissions, 4750, which means set UID. And I keep seeing saying set UID. What it means is when I run it, if it has a set UID call in it, it will execute as the file owner, which is developer. So let's execute it. And it has us entering a URL. So I'm going to assume it's executing the um, PHP script, right? So I'm going to do import OS like this, and then OS.system. I want to say this is how we do it. Uh, no, let's see. Python 2 input RCE. I know I missed it so little, right? What did I miss? I know you do two underscores. Let's see. Import. If we add this. Uh, we need parentheses. So that's what we screwed up. So we run it again. Import OS. Uh, shoot. Single quotes. And then dot system. I'm just going to do bash like that. And I'm going to guess there was some more like Unicode characters. So let's just type it out instead of copying and pasting. So we import OS and execute bash. There we go. So now we are developer on the box. So if we go back to the home directory, we can cat user.txt and read it. Uh, we can't. My UID is developer. Oh, my group is still dub 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 data. So only the group developer can read it. And because the binary only had set UID, not set GID, it didn't set my group this way. But I bet I could go in SSH and add my key, right? Or I could just grab the ID or SA key now. We could copy this. and SSH and then read that key, right? The developer.idrsa. I know I made a typo how I spelled the name, but in the end, that doesn't matter because tab autocomplete is so nice. Uh, 177. Yes. And now we could read user.txt. I don't think the step is needed, um, I'm going to go back to my reverse shell just to see if it was. Um, if we go to the developer and do a sudo l, we can see we can run easy install with sudo. So if we just go to gtfo bins and see if there's anything for easy install, looks like there is with sudo. 
So let's see. Looks like we just run this command. So run it. And do ID. We are now root. So all we did was create a malicious package for easy install and then execute our malicious package. And that's it. We're simply root on the box. So the privesk could be a little um, better, I guess, but hope you enjoyed that. Now for the um, cool part of the box, and that is going to get code execution without the file upload. Because you keep seeing here, we uploaded a file to get this code execution. However, there is a somewhat new technique out to um, use PHP wrappers and a lot of gadget chains to just write arbitrary data here. All we need to get is a fake file and php colon slash slash temp is a magical fake file that just um, will always return something. So that may be complicated. Let's just get into it real quick. And the best blog I found that goes over this is I think the first one. Um, if you just Google PHP filter chain, it should get a list to Synactive. And this is the blog post that talks about it. And what they essentially do is a lot of converting between various character sets to build random characters to prepend to a text file. So I'm going to Google, um, I think it's hack tricks, LFI to RCE PHP filter. I think this is going to get me to the page I want. Let's see. Go here. This is what I want, I think. There should be a GitHub page. My Firefox ends up loading. There we go. Oh, this is the Synactive page. Okay. So I'm going to download this repo. So we just git clone PHP filter chain. We can execute this with Python. We do dash H. We know we just want to do chain and we can print something out that we want. So I'm going to do PHP info real quick. And this isn't going to work because I don't put the magic PHP byte in, but this will show what we're doing or do a good job at showing what we're doing. I'm going to go to test.txt and we can write this out. Let's see. Uh, let's do dev shm test.txt. This is a bad way to copy and paste. Sometimes I hate tmux, but I want to put this in my clipboard easily in this. Or bring it out of tmux is the easiest way. So if I put this into the LFI, it actually writes PHP info and then does have a bunch of junk because um, it's just doing a lot of all this encoding to magically build a gadget that writes PHP info, right? And then that could also be part of this resource. And this is the other magic thing of this thing is the resource PHP colon slash slash temp um, always returns something no matter what you append to it. So this, we get something here. If this wasn't PHP temp, we used another thing like PHP memory. We get, uh, this is for developers. If we do PHP far, um, I think standard N1, like, Temp is just a magical one that works. So with that being said, if we run the same thing, but this time put our magical byte, right? And then cat it out, copy, and paste it. It did not work. I don't know why it didn't work. Let's let's try it again. Okay, so what do we have? I'm gonna put it in single quotes. And we will terminate it. There we go. So 
Cat test. Copy. Paste. And there we go. We have the PHP info page. So we have just raw PHP execution through this whole input parameter, right? Um, I bet we could even use it against our file that we created, right? Let's see. Maybe not because our file that we used is huge. This dangerous.php, but let's try it. Um, I think I can just base64 encode this. And then I want to say, this lets me pass base64, right? If I do dash H, raw base64, paste this in. Yep, dev shm test.txt, cat test.txt, and we, Oh my God, this is huge. Like, I think we may hit the maximum size for a Git request, right? I wanna say this is it. So I'm not sure our script's going to work, but that's why I do these boxes. Yeah, we exceeded the limit. So we'd probably have to do like an f get open or something to execute this. Um, but you get the idea of the script and how to use in that whole exploit chain. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care and I will see you all next time.